I'm Valerie Fletcher. I'm the Executive Director of the Institute for Human Centered Design, and we are thrilled to welcome you to our December 2022 global webcast. This webcast is in, in memory of Eliza Forrest K. Cromwell, who would have loved this presentation today. So I want to begin by thanking uh, the two people who are really responsible for making this happen, and that is Jess Mendez, who is our Director of Communication, and PJ Moynihan, our uh, producer, and uh, they keep us focused on the power of story. And today we have a great story, uh, and that story um, is going to be told through film. We're going to watch the uh, documentary, but we are also going to have the great honor of Jonathan uh, Benaim, who is the center story of this film, and Daniel Polar, his uh, longtime, lifelong director, a friend, and now a director of this extraordinary piece of work. Um, I want to also acknowledge that we will uh, share uh, share the panel discussion with uh, Andrew Pilkington, uh, who is a writer and a producer uh, with a lived experience quite like what Jonathan lives with. Um, and we will have um, we will have Teddy Jackson doing our. Uh, captioning today from Joyful Signing, uh, and Ileana Daniels is going to be providing uh, interpretation uh, from English to Spanish for uh, Jonathan, uh, for his convenience. So we will begin with the film, and I just want to say that part of what excites us so much about this is that it affirms our loathing for the idea of special. Special is, has become a kind of dirty word for people with lived experience of disability. And this is a story that says not about special, it's about um, being able to live the life you choose. And that's made possible partly by the family, whether it's your birth family or your chosen family that allow you to be who you really are. So we are thrilled to be able to share this story with you and we will go right now to the story. Thanks so much. Mi familia me llama el Tuesco. Tuesco es una abreviación en Venezuela de Tuesco Ñetado, que significa estar vuelto nada. Caiga boca. ¿Qué te están haciendo, Squash? Te están amenazando, ¿no? Calla. ¿Qué te pasa a ti? Yo no voy a dar. Hola, Johnny. Hola. Chiquito. Guay. Para de bola. Nunca vieron, mamá, te la di. Bueno, ¿qué podemos hacer? Nada. Ahí está, ahí lo tienes. Mira qué Pero sabes que no me gusta que se monte en la cama. No importa. Ay, si lo, 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 lo voy a jalar. No, Ven, para que pero... se baje. Yo nací en octubre de 1993, seis mesino, y ahí me meten en la incubadora para terminar el proceso de formación. Y cuando me faltaban tres días para irme a la casa siendo un niño totalmente sano, sin discapacidad, la enfermera cuenta que como ya era diciembre, se le olvida por descuido cambiar una aguja de alimentación y que se podía dejar un máximo de 18 días. Y ella la deja 21. Y eso me causó una infección cerebral. A mis padres les dijeron que, que yo no iba a pasar las 48 horas y que compraran el hueco en el cementerio porque la infección había sido súper fuerte. Y ellos fueron y lo compraron. Y afortunadamente, esas 48 horas se han convertido ya en 27 años. Me lo puedes sacar del culo, por favor. Que tiene las líneas grises. ¿Tiene un No. 
Bueno, pero no se ve. No se ve. Se ve, pero se siente. Que hoy no hice cuando. No, no, no. Ahorita. Ok, yo te voy a decir. la toalla. Cuasi. Cuasi, no se jala Jonathan ahora. Ajá. Siempre igual. Siempre es igual, siempre te lo echo en la cara, ¿verdad? En la boca. Sí, Échale el ojo. Siempre le echo en el ojo. ¿Qué tiene de complicado? Hasta yo con mi mano torcida pude tener mejor puntería. Ya te doy un panito. ¿Se limpió la boca? No. En mi casa, pues, el humor negro y la forma de, de tratarme con naturalidad ha sido parte de nuestro día a día, ¿no? De hecho, toda la vida mi mamá me ha tratado y me ha querido con tough love, como dice ella. No, no, que lo arrastra por toda la casa. Lo, se lo lleva hasta la puerta. ¿eh? ¿Eh? ¿Quieres ver? Si quieres ver, mira. Mira, mira, mira. Ay, se le va a quitar el pantalón. Ya, 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 Como me ve mi familia es como yo me veo. Ellos no ven la silla de rueda como algo extra, como una cosa de sobreprotegerme, es todo lo contrario. Me cuidan mucho, obviamente, pero no es como que me limitan o, o me prohíben hacer cosas y me joden. Y yo creo que eso habla de cómo me criaron y cómo yo he afrontado mi discapacidad. Coño, mamá, me estás desvirgando con este pie, piso de piedritas, vale. De verdad, wow. Así vas practicando para cuando te toque. Cuando se puso la situación súper dura en Venezuela, nosotros decidimos emigrar a Panamá. Eso fue como en el 2012. Y mi hermano es el que siempre me ha ayudado. Él es literalmente como mis manos y mis pies. Me hacía todo, me cargaba, me asistía, me acompañaba. Y hace muy, muy poquito, él decidió emigrar a España. Y a su vez, mi papá también decidió regresar a Venezuela para tratar de vender la casa de allá. Y desde ese momento me quedé yo solo con mi mamá, mi hermana y mi abuela. Y ahora son ellas las que me están ayudando en todo momento. Te tengo que contar algo que me pasó en Instagram. ¿Qué? Me escribió un tipo para decirme que me pagaba 3.500 dólares si me dejaba morder el cuello por él. ¿Y aceptaste? Obviamente, ¿no? No. ¿3.500 dólares? Pero es una... ¿Me mordía en el cuello? Sí. Bueno, no vas a decir que no. O sea, no entiendo. ¿Cómo diría que sí? Explícame. Antes de que mi hermano se fuera, yo era todo el tiempo con él para arriba, para abajo, y con mi hermana no tenía una relación tan directa, no convivíamos tanto, la verdad. Y desde que él se fue y que me tocó como convivir con ella y que compenetrarnos un poco más, creo que ha sido una cosa súper buena para nosotros como hermanos y como familia. Y la verdad que algo que para mí es como ejemplo de, de lo que seguir adelante es mi mamá, que en Venezuela ella era dueña de negocios y por emigrar aquí terminó trabajando en una tienda departamental donde la, la explotaban y después pasó a otra empresa donde también eh, el trato fue mejor pero igual era súper fuerte 
y ahora pues todos están caminando porque está retomando algo que ya hacía en Venezuela, que es hacer acupuntura y como que todo está tomando su cauce. Sabes que mi cara está grave, es lo único que tengo bien en la vida. No, relaja, 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 mi amor, relaja. Mm. Relaja ahorita, relaja. ¿Dolió? No. Más fue el susto, ¿no? ¿Ya? Bueno, la cara es lo único que tengo derecho en la vida y me va a clavar una aguja. No, y ahorita mi casa es súper gracioso porque yo soy el hombre de la casa, supuestamente. Vaya hombre, que no las puede ni proteger de absolutamente nada. Más bien, ellas me cuidan a mí todo el tiempo. ¿Quieres tratar de sentarte? ¿Quieres sentarte? Ah, para eso le hago así, cierra la nariz. Está temblando, mira. Te doy un dorito, Johnny. Tiene que tomar un dorito, toma. Yo no entiendo cómo entró tanta harina. ¿Cómo pico la cebolla? No hay que picar cebolla para que. ¿Cómo pico el ajo? Entero. Entero lo dejo. Sí, yo lo tengo cuatro, sí. Un cuatro para no ponernos las manos quitadas. Todos los ajos eran para esto. Pero no los tomas en mi mismo día. Que como no hay sal, 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 entonces hay que. Más abajo. En el hueco, era en el hueco. No, 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 no. Pero no, no. Ah, te voy a poner otra de la mano. No, pero así está. Ya, la molestia. ¿Sí? ¿Sientes que bajó? A ver. ¡Ali! ¡Tengo frío! Que nunca me sacan, esta mierda pasa siempre. Me van y no sé qué, como la mascotica, y después me dejan ahí y se van a pelar ajo, yo no sé qué van a hacer, ver televisión y me quedo yo media hora aquí. Partiéndome de frío. Ah, porque hace un calor. Ya, 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 
Bueno, entonces mi mamá me dijo, pues, vas a ir a comer helado con tu tío. Entonces me preparó, me vistió, yo sí sentí que me perfumó un poquito más de la cuenta, pero yo no le presté atención, ¿no? Estamos en el camino solo mi tío y yo. De repente veo que llegamos como a un lugar y yo veo un cuarto con luces rojas, con humo, con una cama grandísima en el centro. Él me tira ahí y se va. Y yo empiezo a sudar frío porque ya ahí entendí el, el tipo de helado que me iba a comer. Y al rato llega una tipa vestida de blanco, rubia, y ella ya iba una vez para encima de mí, pero directo. Yo no sabía ni cómo llamarla, yo no sabía qué, qué nombre decirla. Al final lo que le dije fue, señorita, por favor, espere, por favor, vamos a conversar. Yo tengo miedo, yo soy, yo soy nuevo, yo soy cero kilómetros, nunca se me va a olvidar. Yo no sabía que mi mamá sabía, yo pensé que era la iniciativa de mi tío. Y de repente llego y en mi casa hay una pancarta gigante de felicitaciones, ya te hiciste hombre, una torta con una vela. Ahorita cada vez que vamos a comer helado, pues queda el chiste de vamos a comer helado porque a Jonathan le encanta que le coman la barquilla, ¿no? Yo más si iba a ir a llamar en bares, me colce baba. Y yo le lo iba a llamar si me la actó a ser asá. Veis vos, va yo más si me la actó a ser asá. Me llevaré el oim, el yom ashvi, me quedó yo toque y vos shabat, mi col me la actó a ser bará el oim la sot, sabrí maranam. Le jaim. Baruja tao na el oim, me le jolam boré pria gafi. Amén. Yo le tengo miedo al sabor. Del miedo shot. al sabor. Al sabor del alcohol. Uh -huh. Por si te gusta. A ver si me paro. Entonces se me endereza la columna. Las calles todas torcidas. Me encantaría estar amarrado por mi integridad física. Buenas. Veo que le hice una reserva ya con Fabiola Saben. Ya, ya hace caso. ¿Quieres que me, me voltee? Ponme boca abajo. Ya va. Ya va. Huele a su toca, ah, vomito. Sí. Está bien, yo entiendo. Sí, sí, sí. Ay, coño. Espérate, 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 espérate. ¿Y por qué te vomitaste? Porque me emborraché. ¿Qué te parece? ¿Te emborrachaste? Sí, fue divertidísimo. <risa> Hay personas que tienen discapacidad que los tratan como si fueran niños o de cristal. Yo siempre he pensado que ser diferente no está mal. Claro que eso te permite tener una visión distinta, te permite desarrollarte de forma distinta. Entonces yo tengo muchísimo que agradecer en cómo mi entorno me ha tratado, porque es lo que me hace ser lo que soy y es eso. No hacer de mi día a día centrada en la discapacidad.
Thanks everyone for watching the film. We are now going to talk to the people who made the film and who star in the film essentially. Jonathan and Daniel uh, will now uh, have a conversation. We will also welcome people to have questions and answers. Uh, we're going to have a, an initial conversation that PJ Moynihan and Jess Mendez will moderate. Uh, and after a bit, we will then welcome your questions and a further discussion will take place directly with the audience. So I'm going to turn this over to uh, PJ Moynihan and Jess Mendez. Um, thanks very much. Thank you, Valerie. Hi, Jess. So Jonathan and uh, Daniel and Andrew, if you could please join us on audio and video here. Thank you for having us. Let's introduce ourselves uh, very briefly uh, for the audience, just so that we're all uh, fully present. Thanks, PJ. So I am Daniel Poller. I'm the director of the film and also producer and also the editor of the film. It, this is a very, very, very personal project. Um, we'll talk more about that later, but I'm a filmmaker, a documentarist. I also work at Condé Nast, uh, doing a lot of doc, uh, content for, for Vogue and Vanity Fair and, and uh, GQ and our, our brands there. And uh, 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 my passion is as a filmmaker, as a documentarian. I, see, I, I mean, uh, we this is this this project uh, is is something extremely extremely important uh, to us, and we're very happy that the New Yorker acquired it as well and distributed it. And then Jonathan, let me just triple check. Uh, he said Jonathan is saying that he needs yeah. to be that he can't turn. Oh, okay. I, th I think we can hear you now. Hi. But I I think. Uh, Hey, I think you have to turn his camera on. There we go. Hello. Okay. <laughs> so Jonathan, if you want to introduce yourself. Well, verdad, para mí es un placer enorme estar aquí y compartir el, el documental con ustedes ha sido maravilloso. Yo lo he visto también un par de veces y cada vez que tengo la oportunidad me emociono porque para mí verdaderamente es parte de mi día a día y no lo pienso, pero cuando veo en pantalla el trabajo tan bonito que se hizo junto con la visión de Daniel, eh, me, me llenó de emoción. La verdad que estoy súper contento y agradecido de tener este espacio para compartir juntos. Uh, Iliana, I, I I don't know if for sorry we're we're trying to still figure out the translation. Iliana, will so will you translate Jonathan into English for you? Is that correct? Thank you. Yes. Well, apologies. The interpreter was distracted trying to figure out the video, um, and I, I I I the interpreter wasn't sure that she was supposed to translate into English. So I don't know. If, I, I I'm so terribly sorry. I don't know if you would like to have Jonathan. Just briefly repeat what he stated, and, and the interpreter can interpret it for you. Claro que sí. Decía que para mí es un honor y muy emocionado estar aquí y que yo también he tenido la oportunidad de ver el documental varias veces, pero cada vez que lo veo la emoción crece por el gran trabajo que 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 Daniel y el equipo logró retratar de lo que es mi realidad y para mí es muy especial tener la oportunidad de darle voz y poder compartir hoy con ustedes. Um, gladly, it is such an honor for me to be here. I'm very excited to be here. I mean, every I've seen the, the film several times and every time I get more excited and more emotional about it, I'm very grateful to Daniel and his his team for, for presenting this and, and presenting um, a glimpse into my life. Thank you. And Andrew, it's such an honor to be here with you as well. Uh, we love your work and it means a lot uh, for us to that, that you joined us. Oh, uh, you both know the, the movie is so good. I uh, I smile so much. It was, uh, amazing to, 
say, um, you know, thank you for being cool. Just because I, I had nothing to do with this amazing film, I'm just, uh, I made a movie. Uh, but yeah, it was so wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm glad to be here. I, I do a good thing I brought. I know how hard it is to be directing editing, and producing all that the same time. So, cool to you. Thanks, thanks. No, it, it, it really means a lot that you're here. And, and again, like we also are, are admirers of your work. So this is great. And so I'm PJ Moynihan. I am IHCD's uh, producer, and I, I also uh, am a documentary producer. My company is Digitalized Film, um, and so we've done um, some documentary work that is you know, also in the vein of sort of changing attitudes uh, around around social issues, uh, including mental health and and addiction, and um, you know, and what we refer to as disability. Um, so I'm just happy to be here amongst this esteemed panel today. Um, really, re you know, remarkable filmmaking. By Daniel um, and and Jonathan, just a real remarkable uh, you know sort of portal into your life. Um, and you know, Jess, you want to let folks know uh, who Jess Mendez is. Yes, um, it's an honor to be here. My name is Jess Mendez. Um, I am the director of communication and inclusive impact at IHCD. Um, prior to that, I have over eight years of experience creating video and photo content um, for a series of like magazines and record labels. And where I connect the most with this documentary is I am a sibling um, and have like lived experience. So similar to Daniel, I look at my brother and like can can more capture the personality that comes through, whereas like most people can, can just see like the physical disability. So this was a very special documentary and I'm so happy that you all agreed to be here today to discuss on how art is an, in, in, an, an important tool when it comes to storytelling and also changing um, perspectives and policies. Thanks, Jess. And Jonathan, was that squash? Did I hear squash in the background? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, so Jonathan's family is- We uh, want to be part of this. <laughs> Yeah, of course, it's one of the stars. Great. So what I think would be very helpful, you know, this question is first for you, Daniel. Um, I think it would be really interesting for the audience to hear sort of the backstory of the project, um, you know, your relationship to Jonathan and his family and how this documentary came to be through uh, The New Yorker and some of the accolades that it's achieved since it's uh, been released. Yes, of course. So uh, Jonathan and... And, and I, we go way back. Uh, I, his brother and I were born the exact same day. We've been best friends since we were four years old. And obviously through Roberto, I met Jonathan when I was very, very little. And Jonathan's family became like my second family. I, I grew up with you guys, uh, with Jonathan and Roberto. His mother was like my second mother and his father like a second father. And so throughout my life, uh, I always say I was raised partly by you guys as well. And uh, I, I, you know, growing up, I was witnessing these beautiful scenes unfold at your house, at Jonathan's house. And it, it just, it, you know, I even I, I even say that some of my my filmmaking choices nowadays, my filmmaking style is very influenced by your fam, by Jonathan's family, by what I learned from you. Uh, and, and, you know, growing up, what, witnessing these beautiful scenes unfold in your house, I always said, like, oh, I wish I could document this because these are so interesting. Uh, story. Every day there was something interesting, something beautiful happening, something worth laughing. And, and I would take mental notes of, of every experience we lived together. And, you know, the years went by, I... I uh, I studied filmmaking, I started a career in filmmaking, and I always wanted to, to go back and, and do something with Jonathan. I even, I even want to say, like, the first ever short film I did when I was very little, I did it with Jonathan. Like, 
um, it, it, we, we go way back in that sense too. And it was very interesting also because um, when, uh, you know, we always, when we were growing up, we, we did everything with, with you, Jonathan, right? We would go skating. We like nothing stopped us. Like it doesn't matter if we went to places that were non accessible, we would still go like not, and we didn't care about, about all that stuff. We would like plow through it. We would take you everywhere we could with us. And, and, you know, we, in, in that sense, I always say like, it would be yeah, right all of that it would be amazing to document all of that so after you know getting my my degree in filmmaking my uh, my bachelor sorry and af after like having uh, you know going to having having a career in the filmmaking world and in the industry i i always wanted to document this but i felt that i wasn't that ready i wanted to make justice to your story to jonathan's story I wanted to make sure that I was able to tell this in the right way. And so during the pandemic, like half, halfway through the pandemic, uh, I think that uh, I was talking to Jonathan in, and it felt like the right time. It also, uh, it was a moment, a particular moment in which your, your father uh, w w went to Venezuela to try and sell the house and your brother just moved to Spain. And for Jonathan, as he says in the documentary, his brother is like you call him your hands and your legs. Like your 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 he he would take you everywhere. He was always there for you. And the moment and 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 with his absence, you know, your mother, your sister, and your grandmother had to take on a bigger responsibility. And it felt like the right moment to tell to start telling your story. Because I always like I, if I want to document all of these beautiful scenes that I, I live with you, I wanna I want them to be more. I wanted to show those through a um, very te style, where where I would have our audiences there with you, experience those scenes with you, not just uh, go not just resource through to the traditional talking heads uh, style where you're just gonna tell you your story. I feel like that wouldn't make justice to to your life, to your portrait. We, we really want it. We, I'm like, everyone has to really be there with, with, with you. Uh, and so I went, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm based in LA. So we, we took, uh, we went to, to Panama. I got a, a small crew and we went there and we started uh, filming and the, you know, it's such an intimate portrait because uh, Jonathan and, and I will always say like, uh, his family was used to always seeing me with a camera around. So that's why I was able to become a fly on the wall and just, just capture this intimacy because there was nothing new there. Uh, they, they, were, they were pretty open and, and, and it felt like it, that was the, the right way to go and it felt like the right time. So we started filming. Um, yeah, so that, that's the, the backstory. And, and then, oh, uh, how, and then of course we did, some filming we we did the first part because we we did some in february 2020 uh, <laughs> sorry in october 2021 and some in, uh, in february 2022 but with the first uh things that we shot we presented that to the new yorker who has a beautiful <laughs> documentary uh, umbrella like they acquire a lot of uh, gorgeous documentary <laughs> and they were interested so they really liked it and they, they said, keep pursuing it let's uh and and once it's, it's finished We'll, we'll talk back. we'll meet again and so we did we finished uh we went back we shot the rest of it we pitched it again to the new yorker and they loved it they were very very uh happy with with what we had uh with the edit that we have with with the structure of the project and so we we signed with them and 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 that was uh that was it well, you're being modest because that wasn't it. It it it, it, no. it got out there pretty far. So just let you know. I think it's important for oh. people to yeah. know that the film really did have some legs once it was published. Oh, so the impact of the film, yeah. So uh, they acquired it, and then uh, we obviously went through the festival route. We went to some festivals, and uh, then and the New Yorker released it, and it was a surprise because first they uh, like like it, it was it got a lot of uh, a lot of views it was insane how 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 well it performed it it, it it connected with with such a big audience so quickly and and sometimes you would say like okay this this uh because 
we'll talk more about it about, about our goal with the project later but we again what we what uh Val was saying like this this defies the concept of special we wanted to make a project that goes beyond uh the disability that just uh portrays Jonathan by and, and enhances his his charisma and and he connected with so many people and the project went sort of viral and then he, they did they released uh part of it on on social media in in like two days he got like two million views and I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of likes and and he did pretty well and then uh thousands of people were writing to us every day on our dms or email to uh thank us for these this raw portrayal uh, and and for, for for not filtering uh these sort of uh stories and and telling it the, the way you know it, it was meant to be told and so it definitely reached uh, to a, a lot of it, it got a high uh, a pretty big reach and and we were so happy that that it that it did especially jonathan thank you daniel so I, I think that's a really all that context i think is really important for the audience to understand because you know it's not that this is just a beautiful film and a beautiful example of representation it's a film that is actually out there doing work in the world on its own steam so i i have a question uh, this next question is for Jonathan, and so I'll let uh, Ileana translate. Um, so, but, but the, the pretext is that a lot of successful documentary filmmaking is about access, about having access to a subject, access to a story. Uh, and so obviously this was a very unique example of access where you didn't have to build this relationship, uh, Daniel, with Jonathan, you were already like family. So it's just, a, I think that's a really beautiful part of the story. So Jonathan, I want to ask you, you know, do you feel um, like this film was a was a re was a true representation of your story, and, and what does it feel like to see your story on screen like that? And is the only thing you do in Panama go to the beach? Because it seemed like there was a lot of that in the <laughs> in the story. Absolutamente, yo siento que el el documental me me nos representa como familia y me representa. ¿Por qué? Porque su su raíz es el humor. Eh, y yo vivo la vida con humor y sin victimismo, sin victimización, sin lástima. Y, y creo que esa es la columna vertebral del material. Así que me siento súper complacido. Para mí es eh, una oportunidad de darle voz a mi historia, de dar a conocer historias de personas con discapacidad que aman la vida porque yo amo la vida. Absolutely. I definitely feel like this represents my family and it rep uh, represents me because the, at the root of all of this is our sense of humor of looking at this without sadness or without pity. I mean, it's given us the opportunity uh, to show the way that my story and the story of others that love life because I truly love life. Thank you, Jonathan. I think that's very, I think that's very clear. Uh, through that little glimpse into your into your life, uh, Andrew, I'd like for you to chime in here. So you know a lot of you know why we believe this story, this film is important, is because um, it sort of represents in a lot of ways um, what we hope is a changing representation in cinema. Um, and so I would like for you, I, I'd like to hear your thoughts about the documentary and about you know, do you believe that um, there is a changing, there is a sort of a changing attitude about representation in cinema? And are there some examples of that, including your work? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's definitely more than maybe be. And I think movies like this one that show people with disabilities living and going out and doing um, you know, um, you like to go out to the nightclub and drink, and you know, I, I certainly do that in my own oh, more than I do. But that in the day, I do not, not so much now. But, um, but yeah, I think that. Fail. Uh, uh, like this, um, but also like being 
they revisit your, you know, you realize have some more team. Um, but yeah, I, I think nowadays you see different people on TV, um, children programming, um, um, adult programming, um, you know, but even more so, and in Europe, um, that more and more people with disability, um, um, TV, um, um, you know, so it's you know, you got film brain that picture with because the people character and more importantly a simple week as the table character. So I think, you know, the world in general <coughs> it may even bother but, you know, obviously we got a long way to go, um, you know, especially behind the camera. So, um, you know, um, people like being on um, continuing to make authentic content is really, really important. Huh? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, there's there's still a long way to go, but I mean, it, it's it's impressive how 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 much we've we um moved forward in this this past few years, and definitely, you know, that that is as you say, like that that is our goal with with this project to to show show the show show beyond all of all of uh, you know show beyond this really show like this the scene the nightclub scene and all of those moments that definitely just just uh, the, the way John, Jonathan says like it just it, it normalizes everything there's just and so thanks no yeah it's 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 awesome and there's a long way to go I want to say something I can yeah yeah oyendo oyendo a Andrew a mí me, me encanta porque es una manera de mostrar que, que los límites están en el otro, que si tenemos la voluntad, realmente podemos lograr lo que nos proponemos. Y tener espacios como este para mostrar estas realidades es súper poderoso, porque a veces lo que necesitamos es eso, ser vistos, pero ser vistos desde una perspectiva honesta, real, y no, no, no construida desde lo que pensamos, sino desde lo que verdaderamente sucede. Y compartir eh, juntos para mí es súper especial. Yes, absolutely. I really love to to listen to Andrew because it truly demonstrates that the disabilities or the inabilities are in other people, not in ourselves. Um, especially when you show it the, in this way. Where, I mean, it's so fabulous because you're able to see where you are able to see um, that our realities are not those that are developed or constructed or made up it's what we what we actually live and what our um what our actual reality is i, I love i love that Jonathan, that, the, the, that concept that the limitation uh, also like in another way to say what you said uh, that the limitation uh there's the limitations are in others minds not not in our in, not in yourself so that's that's right Oh, 
the you film and you cut out or you know yeah so so where we wanna head with it where where else we wanna go with the documentary no did no. before you guys filmed it okay did you talk about what you want to show in the yeah. and did you film more things that you could include or you know yeah 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 so so we filmed a lot so definitely there's more we could include um wow this document right like we we talked about we we were going i think we had how much footage it was a lot like the, the first cut was what uh it was it was pretty long and, and there's so many amazing scenes that we left in the cutting room that didn't make it to the documentary impressive scene i i uploaded some to my instagram um and to jonathan's instagram too that people will love like it, it, it also got some laughs and and it, it was it was so sad that we had to cut that out but uh when we were talking with a new yorker they I, and i think they were right because this this was a short documentary more it just felt like a, an, an overkill in a sense of that that we were we you know I, I think sometimes good short good short documentaries have to like be concise and to the point and, and in this case it felt like this was like like a, a good taste of of jonathan uh, of, of jonathan's life it felt like more uh it, it was going to feel a little bit more even if it, it was still interesting it would it was going to feel a touch repetitive or or it just felt like it, it was more than needed so the new yorker also said like hey, hey you should cut a few minutes here and there and and we caught it and they're cutting scenes because again it felt like this was just the perfect uh the, the perfect uh assembly you, you know like as, as far as also uh, total run time uh goes also because it felt like more than 18 minutes what maybe was too much and and I think we'll we'll talk about it later, but we'll talk about what what follows because we definitely this is just part of of the story, and then de definitely there's uh, more coming. But I don't know if you want to talk more about uh, how how we structure the the film. Well, for for now, let's put a pin in sort of you know there there is sort of a there's a tease here that there's more to this story uh, yes. that that is to come. But let's put a pin in that for now. I I want to follow on to Andrew's question and ask just when it comes to you know your vision for what the end product was going to be how you wanted to demonstrate uh representation in the story um i'm curious about you know who did you was was it intentional to sort of frame the narrative around you know not um not showing jonathan or his family as a victim was was that sort of it was that part of the design of how you shot and, and made choices around the film and also was the was the, the piece around humor was that intentional or is that just sometimes it's, you know, what you have in the can? Um, and obviously that's part and parcel to Jonathan and his family, but, you know, was it intentional for those two themes to really uh, cut through the whole, all three acts? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All of that was definitely intentional because again, it's a reflection of, of Jonathan's uh, family and, and the, that dark humor, for example, that's integral to, to your family and i always say like it's it's not just a tool but it's it's a theme in the story it's 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 very it's a very important part of the story uh how 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 it and it's not uh we say like it's not humor that's used to cope it's not like that it's it's just a part of of the of what of what what's the normality in your family and how that applies to your brother, to you and your sister, and your, like there is, uh, and and I think it just is it goes with with our our goal. And you know, uh, growing up, and Jonathan can expand a little bit more on this, but your mother and father always told uh, us, me and Roberto, your brother, we, she said like you know Jonathan 
he, of course, you got to mind that, that he has a disability and that he may, might require uh, a special care, but never think that he will require a special treatment. And, and, they, and your family was always saying that um, to us growing up. And because it was always, you know, uh, you know, we joke with you, we took, we went with you everywhere. Uh, with that, we, we, it was there, there what we, we always said, like, there's, there's that, that concept of special uh, treatment. It was just absurd to us. Um, and because your parents just said, because of that, what, what, that was the, the mindset of your parents. And I think, we, I think also, you know, that was the goal of this piece, uh, you know, make justice to to that concept. Um, uh, Jonathan, you probably want to add to that. Adicional a lo que, adicional a lo que decía Daniel, yo les quiero contar algo, para responder un poquito la, la pregunta de Andrew, que el humor, yo acepté mi condición y decidí rodar mi vida, porque yo, no digo que yo camino la vida, yo digo que yo la ruedo. Yo la ruedo con humor, o sea, el humor es parte de mi, de mi ingrediente diario para sobrepasar cada situación, siempre viendo lo bueno dentro de lo que la gente pudiera hacer, pudiera ver como malo. Entonces el humor tenía que estar ahí porque es parte integral de mi día a día. No podía ser de otra manera. I just want to piggyback off of that um, and emphasize how like the humor throughout the documentary was something that like also hit very close to home. So as I initially mentioned, my youngest brother, I have two. Um, my youngest brother is like completely dependent. He requires like 24 hour care, but he's also nonverbal. And um, dark humor is definitely something that like is a through line like I think of like some of like the heaviest moments, but also like the most joyful moments like growing up and like my mom always had like a punchline and like my brother's giggling and then like with time like I see how my my other brother and myself have adopted that and it just becomes like the jokes kind of pushes through and then like um, another reason that I connected with the documentary was like Jonathan's nickname so my youngest brother's nickname um, is Cuckoo. He's nonverbal, which like in English translates to Cuckoo, but like he's he's very like sonically inclined and like loves music. So I remember as a kid, like I would make like little jingles with the with the repeating sound of Cuckoo. And like, although he can't speak the same way we communicate, he'll kind of like mimic that audio back to me. And we would just be like at the kitchen table, like making songs in a way um until this day like whenever I'm at the house like he's at a keyboard or like walking around with the speaker and like that's just like I again outside looking in I think a lot of people might not necessarily like resonate with that but I I genuinely appreciated how this documentary focused on like finding the personality and the, and the treasure in that rather than like putting the individual that's suffering um, as the victim within the story that's like a victim of X, Y, and Z systems or like of this tragedy that they that they have confronted in this lifetime. So thank you. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, that's so, so impressive. I mean, it, it, that, that I think we, we align with that perfectly in the sense that, right, we, Jonathan and I, we always talk about, we say, we want to break stick the stigmas of victimization that are uh, related to themes of disability. And, and that was uh, our goal from day one, from the moment we started shooting. And, I, and, and again, we'll put a pin on this, but uh, this project goes beyond that. And, 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 but, but we, from the, the moment we started talking about uh, putting Jonathan's story in, in camera is we have our goal and our goal is to to break the stigmas of victimization because a lot so there's a lot of amazing films like Andrew's films but there's also um, films that that just emphasize in the drama and and that part that that sometimes it's it's hard to connect with and something that Jonathan and I talked about a lot is 
uh, why that happens us, uh, often, why some people uh, sort of uh, put uh, like uh, someone like Jonathan, you know, on a pedestal and, and sort of uh, idolizes you immediately, right? Like, and, 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 and treats you like a child or, or treats you, and we've witnessed that growing up, like if, you know, like even if we went to like a birthday party or anything, they wouldn't, uh, it, it feel like a, a lack of, uh, di like disrespectful when somebody would even treat you like a child. I, I always remember that growing up with you, Jonathan. And we always thought that why would that happen? We, we one of the reasons we, uh, in, in our discussions is a lot of people rather, to uh, do that because they want to detach themselves immediately so they would meet Jonathan and would, they would detach themselves from Jonathan and, uh, and and by doing that they would treat you as if you're this golden statue that is like oh and and and, and they give you that right a special care and so 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 that we felt like that detachment is not r right like and it's because of you know because mo most of the people that do that do that they're they're used to seeing this sort of victimized portrayal on camera they don't know you they don't get to connect with you uh in in a way beyond your disability that that's what, what we were we were talking about and so that's why we decided you know this film has to give us uh, a look into your life that goes beyond that and gets allows the audience to really get to know you and it was a challenge because it's like okay so it, it's it's a short amount of time to really get to know you Jonathan and to to explore uh, experience your charisma and, and you touched uh, on oh sorry I don't know please, please go ahead no 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 that's and you touched on like so many lifestyle topics within a short window of time um, one, so I had to share this documentary with my mom. Um, my family's from West Africa, Cape Verde, and my mom doesn't speak English that well. So it was perfect that uh, we speak like a dialect of Portuguese. So it was perfect that the documentary was in Spanish. So like she could, she could watch it and it not be like something that she's like struggling to consume. And then she automatically like can empathize with Jonathan's mom and see Jonathan and like put that in context with our, with our family. But like, again like when people have like a small encounter with someone with a disability because like oftentimes like they're so separated from society like you you often want to tokenize them and like you made it so human and touching on so many lifestyle topics the ice cream thing is something that my family talks about because my brother's a couple years younger than than Jonathan, but he's in his early 20s. And we're like, what are we going to do? And my mom died at the whole ice cream store. She's like, see, we got to set my brother. Up. We got to set Jason's my brother's name. We got to set Jason up on an ice cream day. And I'm like, yeah, Jason should go yeah. on an ice cream day. I don't know if I want to be a part of the movement, like the planning for that. I love it. Like, that is very important. Um, that, and the ice cream day, that's now it sounds yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. No. Yeah. It, it's 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 very uh, important. It is, and I I yeah. think like as a sibling, um, you know, like we're only a couple. I'm only a couple years older than him, so I'm just like, how do we? Is he gonna have housing, care, education? Like, how are his basic needs met? Because obviously, I want him to have a fulfilled quality of life, but like still have a level of independence. So like, again, as a sister, I'm not thinking about that, but. I guess when you are a collective taking care of an individual, like that contributes to the quality of life. So like how involved do you get in into it to at least like put it on a track that it happens to a degree naturally. And shout out to your mom, Jonathan. Yeah, <laughs> she's she's a heroine, like she's amazing. Uh, and, through, and, and something I think you were, that you were talking about, I think is also uh, the fact of, and, and this connects really well with uh, dark humor is because this all of the things that you're you're talking about is very important to talk about to not stigmatize them to to say it it's like you know it's like it's sex it's it's all of these things that we should definitely talk about and and dark humor is also a window into talking about these subjects because dark humor presents us with these subjects without stigmatizing stigmatizing them. And, and I think that's what's so important. It's like, okay, so you're able to talk about the sexual aspect of it. 
because you're able to joke about the sexual aspect of it too and so that bring brings it all together i think i think that's why the the the, the dark humor is so important as well and 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 in the case of of jonathan um there there is just uh, you were you always say like and it's a, a, a theme in the documentary as well but it's shame shame is a, an important theme because Jonathan always says, right? You say like, I ha you have no shame. Like you couldn't have shame. I don't know if you want to talk about the fact what you always tell me about uh, que no puedes tener la, no puedes tener este pena, vergüenza, porque porque si no no podría este subsistir. No, sí, o sea, yo yo siempre digo y lo siento que las personas con discapacidad desde mi vivencia no tenemos pena, no tenemos pudor, porque si tuviéramos pudor eh, no podíamos vivir, no podíamos desempeñar esa vida lo más normal posible. O sea, si a mí me, me daría pena que me vieran mi cosita, eh, eh, yo no tendría cómo ir al baño, no tendría cómo compartir con amigos, no tendría cómo desenvolverme en un ámbito laboral en una oficina, cosa que hago. Entonces, creo que las personas con discapacidad, para buscar esa normalidad, tenemos que perder ese pudor. Absolutely. Um, I, I always say that people with disabilities, we can't be embarrassed. We can't have that prudishness because, I, I, in other words, like we wouldn't be able to have a normal life. I, if I didn't want people to see my thingy, I mean, like I wouldn't be able to go to the bathroom. I wouldn't be able to have friends. I wouldn't be able to work in an office, which is something that I do. I mean, we people with disabilities have to get rid of that prudishness. We can't have it. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, I feel sexy. I feel sexy all the time. <laughs> You're so sexy. I also want to shout out Jess for bringing this film to us um, because you know this is you know such it's so in it's so on mission for IHCD and you know sort of this in this vein of changing attitudes around these issues. And I would like to uh, so thank you. Um, and I, I would like to um, you know kick this over to Andrew. A Andrew. Per Andrew. Uh, wrote and produced, correct? Uh, Best summer ever, uh, which is available on Hulu. Just you know, a scripted feature. Um, just a really fun, beautiful, remarkable film um, that anyone who has not seen it that's in the audience here should definitely check out. Um, but it was a, I think, one example, and I think there are others in the culture over the last several years of a film that really, you know, it broke through and 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 got onto a mainstream platform. You know, hopefully was viewed by a mainstream audience. Um, and is very different than what we traditionally uh, find when we're mining through these platforms, streaming platforms late at night looking for content. Um, so Andrew, I would like to ask you directly, I mean, do you think that your film, uh, Best Summer Ever, you know, getting onto a platform like Hulu and getting out there, do you think it's, are there examples of it sort of changing attitudes? Has there been a ripple effect in your opinion? Um, um, well, um, we were to get on to um, you know, the movie was looked up by Southwest in 2020 and that did not work out the way we thought it So getting on to the was definitely a big win. Um, and, a lot of people have brought the movie into, you know, they never seen anything like it on TV or film. We end that, but we tried to do writing. So basically, in the movie, most of the characters are played by people with disabilities in well, they would probably never get past us in the light. They are cops. They will probably have a muscle. It might, it might be tough. It might have a high romance. I say it for grief. We will deliver so that that is the tagline. Um, but I mean, you know, 
So there are, you know, some examples, some recent examples around other document or other films would be, you know, there's a film called Crip Camp, which is available on Netflix. And that stuff, you know, that features our friend Judy Human. Um, you know, that was nominated for Best Documentary for the Academy Awards, I think, I believe two years ago. Um, a film like Coda on Apple TV that, you know, about a deaf family that really, I think, did that win the Academy Award last year? Yeah. Um, but, but... You know, the, the film, uh, the film, The Sound of Metal, that's on Amazon Prime. So I'm like name checking all these platforms here, apparently. But, um, you know, but these are, you know, these are the these are the, the the big guys. You know, these are, you know, this is where you want your content to land as a as a producer. And there are, I think there are multiples of examples in the culture, including Andrew's film, including these other films that have been, you know, nominated for awards that are very different than the typical representations that, you know, Hollywood has put forth over you know, centuries or, or a century of movie making. Um, so I think this is actually a great bridge into, um, you know, that what's, what's will be exciting for our audience to hear is that the documentary uh, Tuesco, am I pronouncing to, that, that, that correctly, Tuesco? Yeah, I think there's no way to pronounce it wrong. <laughs> All fucked up, that's, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> was, you know, was hopefully just chapter one of the story. There is now a, a follow-on project in the mix that Daniel, can tell us about that is sort of um, you know a progression of um, uh, out of the documentary. So Daniel, you want to tell the audience about the next? Yeah, step? of course. So the next step is a scripted feature, and basically, uh, even before we started the documentary, Jonathan and I we 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 started working on a on a script because Jonathan's stories are actually very very interesting and they go. It's, and sometimes it's unbelievable. There's things that you that 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 you could laugh about so so much, and and it's such a deep story. But yeah. as we were then doing in the documentary, the reality is that if if these stories that that the documentary has a very ten nature to it, and these stories we cannot uh, have him sit like 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 give us the the interview and tell us uh, these stories. It just felt boring. It, the the best was to obviously continue with our our script and and turn these stories into into a live act into a feature adaptation into sorry not adaptation but into a feature feature film and so we finished our script and it was it was a really good script and it won we submitted it to the Panama Film Fund and it won it won uh, 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 all the fun, the funding to shoot it um and uh, and it was uh it had a international jury of very very talented filmmakers uh, who reviewed it and and loved it and so now and now with the documentary of course the story is it's just getting more hype which is great and so it's a very inter uh, interesting script uh that we hopefully want to shoot in february in february of next year that's our goal Jonathan the best part is that Jonathan is going to play himself like I we were like obviously we cannot cast anyone that's uh you know to play Jonathan because he's so unique he's so good and we even don't have some table reads and he and 
you, Jonathan, you take every word from the, for every dialogue and just make it even better. It's like you, I say like you're you're one in a million. You know, you have that. Latin, you're so natural and 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 word flows so beautifully out of your mind and then you of your mouth and then you build on top of those of our die of the dialogues we wrote and make them even even more interesting. And so. So we, we wrote this film and it's a film, it, it fictionalizes a lot of moments, but it's it's the story, it, it's a it's a dark, it's a dark comedy with some dramatic elements, but it basically will tell the story of the moment when uh, Jonathan decides to actually go and confront the person that was responsible for your your disability. And so we fictionalized that a little and we made we turned it into a trip. Uh, trip that Jonathan has to go, go in and and in, in order to find this this uh, this person, this doctor, and and that sort of take a backseat. And the story really is about Jonathan's uh, trip, right? About about we we say it's in a way it's kind of like a coming of age of a person that never had a coming of age, uh, who gets to travel and experience his freedom and experience uh, something that he never experienced before. And, and and you and again it asks you to look beyond the disability it just asks you to look at Jonathan as a character where you love him you hate him you there's there's you you have all these feelings uh, that you go with him that you that are never limited by by the disability and so that that is the goal with our film and it's a very fun script that's just constantly uh, you know not reinventing itself but it's constantly giving you something to look forward to. And it never falls flat in that sense. And, and that's sort of the, the reviews we've gotten so far. People really ha have responded really well to the story. And hopefully our goal is to, to shoot this story in, in February. We're still running, you know, trying to, to get everything. It's, it's, it's almost February. So we're, it's, it's kind of a big challenge, but it's a challenge that uh, we feel very comfortable on. We, we feel very capable on, on, on achieving. And in and as you said, this is a film that we want to we we want we want to break. We want to do the same. We want to keep breaking these stigmas of victimization. We we have is the same the same. We have the same goal with the documentary, but now in a bigger scale. Um, and we hope and we we're sure it's going to connect with uh, a lot of people just like the documentary did, uh, but in a in in a much more deeper way in a in a longer in a longer format where you just get to experience uh, this trip. Uh, uh, Jonathan gets to take you on this trip and and and, and tell you about uh, some of the stories that that he lived that that, that he he's lived through in a in a much more poetic or beautiful way because we have the resource of of, of fiction of 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 enhancing everything uh, so that 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 this this uh, so that it, it can definitely hold uh, people's attention for for a long uh, for for a long time, and it never feels like a like a movie that's gonna be depressing or or sad. It's just it's gonna give you a bunch of feelings, but it, it's a feel good film also, and and it's very enjoyable. So we're really really happy that we get to move on to this next chapter. So it's a road trip story. It's a buddy story. It's a hero's journey. It's all. It's all. The, it's all the big ones. Yeah, um, yeah that's 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 it. Um, could, could you speak a little bit to the title? Because the title is different than the documentary and the, and the significance of the title. Yeah, of course. So the title of the film is going to be called Espina, which means spine, which has a lot of connections to the story. One of them, the, the main connection, and that's just the the one from uh, the the. The, the, over, the overall connection is, is that it relates to obviously Jonathan's spine. Jonathan always says like, oh, my, my he always says my crooked spine. And he definitely deals with that. But the real meaning of it is in Spanish, we always say that we have, a, there's this, we, a spine and splinter is, is also the same thing. So you say we, have, you, we say that we have a splinter or spine that's uh, prickling us to do something. And, and for, for someone to do that thing that the spike, uh, the spine is prickling you, you have to remove it so that is uh so so that is the meaning of the film is like is that that's that's a splinter that you have to take out of your of your skin in order to go and do what you were meant to do what you always wanted to do 
So that that correlates to us to to the Spanish saying that is also common in all the all the all the Latin languages. So in Spain, from from Spain to Colombia to Mexico, we all have the same uh, saying, which is take the remove the splinter to go and do what you always want to do. And you have some interesting attachments to the film as well, um, which you, you're you're free to to share. And, and also, you know, uh, when we've um, just as, I, as an add on, when we've made films in the, uh, you know, we always have references for the films that were for the current film that we're working on. Is there an is there an example of a of a a, a not of a piece of fiction that is based on a true story where the actor plays themselves? Is there another example of that? I can't think of one. I, I saw one. Uh, oh, the the clean. There's a clean Eastwood movie, but I didn't see that one. But I saw one from Venezuela actually that does that. That takes a, a sort of a document, the real characters, and and puts them in. But I would say also, I think if not the best example would be Nomadland, also right, because it takes uh, real people and 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 brings the fiction element to it. A scripted element so i think nomadland would be something that's uh closer to it but i i, I again like we this is a feel-good film this is uh we you know our references are we have a lot of uh french films for reference but it, it's a very uh beautiful i would say actually one of our biggest references is always almodovar uh you know the colorfulness that almodovar brings to the films we're going for that as well so that that the stylization makes you forget about everything like that you just see Jonathan Jonathan's beauty overall in the film and, and connect with him beyond anything else. So I would say that that's that's where we what we're looking to forward to. And, and and it's again like I we I we haven't seen much this on much. So I think this is a great opportunity to to be part of. of to, to be part of the, team, the people that are doing stuff like this. I can tell Andrew's got something. Uh, I do want to ask, will I will gain ice cream be part of the movie? Or will gain ice cream be part of the story? That if you, you want to be part of the film? <laughs> No. Uh, we'll, we'll get will getting ice cream be part of the story? I think yeah, it's yeah, ice cream be part of the film. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a scene. There's that that scene uh, is part of the. the it's a very important part of the story. This and is my favorite part. This is my favorite part of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This this is uh, the this scene will will be part of it definitely in a very tasteful way. Again, everything in pro of of just looking beyond beyond any. Uh, beyond the, the limit, beyond the disability, it's like, this is, um, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful story. And then of course, it's a huge challenge. It's a, it's a massive challenge. Every day we, we've been, we, you know, we have to fight with, with maybe getting more budget here. And like, it's, it's like a huge, uh, complicated, it's like a big complication, but I feel like I, we feel confident that we're going to make a very strong film. And, you know, and it's, it's sometimes tough because, uh sometimes you could have a, like like i think you could have you could do a pre-sale with a streamer and maybe the streamer comes in and wants to replace jonathan with a famous actor and it's like no no, no we want to tell the story uh the way we want to in in you know the way we want to tell the story with with jonathan at the center of it we we're not willing to to change that so in that sense it's 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 a very personal film to us and we have a very very strong vision of it that will will do everything we can to to keep it and to and 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 to you know be part of the pioneers that are are sort of telling stories like this. As it relates to representation, you know, this is a you know for you, Daniel, for you, Andrew, and, and for you, Jonathan. I mean, do you how do you feel about films that have been made where someone is representing somebody that has some type of limitation or disability mm -hmm. that does not um, that that is that is character acting? you see that as problematic? Uh, it's, I, I don't know if you want to add to it, Jonathan, this, if you want to answer that, Jonathan. Sí, sí, yo, yo quisiera decir que problemático no es algo 
diferente y creo que la diferencia nos hace eh, maravillosos como humanos. Creo que ahí está la magia, poder mostrar diferentes perspectivas y diferentes visiones y así que cada quien escoja la que mejor le sienta, ¿no? Y creo que al, al tener cada vez más ventanas y más posibilidad, eso es lo que estamos logrando. No creo right. que haya una buena o una mala, creo que hay que recibirlas a todos. Ya. Yeah. Yes, no, I do want to add something. I don't see it as problematic. I think it's just um, we all have different, our differences are what make humanity so wonderful. I mean, we all have our different perspectives. They, they are different perspectives and you can, you can take the one that best suits you. I mean, I think having so many windows into, into our lives and to this humanity is what makes everything so, so special. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think if it takes part, it's good. Like, you know, the only way if you have or have a disability, you can have an out in the who have a disability. Uh, no, but the very old more, no, but people are getting me from being back. No, does he got this in real life? No, but he has the loop on it. So, um, when you have a movie like the one about people hot and um, you feel his regret, um, you know, being able by being, um, you know, to, um, I think that might be a little bit of, um, you know, um, you feeling regret, but in general, I think, you know, and many of us, before Andrew it's also it's not just about who's in front of the camera it's also about who's behind the camera as well you know the, yeah. the, you know, the, the producing team the, the, the filmmaking team you know um, it's both sides yeah yeah equally, equally important. yeah exactly and so we we get we get that's how we also the insight of, of the project it just becomes much more insightful in that sense as well so that so that sort of a bridges us to a big question. I mean, why? How does every how does everyone benefit from these stories? How does how, how does how, how do the how do communities benefit? How do people benefit from just these examples of representation um, in sort of mainstream content and mainstream media? I I think these are obviously stories that are extremely important to experience. That uh, they been it's been hard in the past to to get them out there um and it just gives us a view jonathan always says this it's, it gives us a, a different perspective in life that uh, some stories that uh, haven't explored before and and so in the in our case it's it's just we want to open up people's minds towards stories that have that that has have been told uh let like the, that, that we've hear, heard less before and so that's where you, you know that's where the representation is help is helping the stories you know, even even if if it's a film where that deals with disability that didn't have anyone with disability in it it still in some way opens up 
the, the a window or a door for 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 much deep for for stories that include that has like this uh, type of inclusivity in it, and and again it's like uh, it's it, they're extremely important to to show a different perspective. Jonathan is always saying like uh, because of, even in documentary like because of the way you were raised differently, it just gives you that different perspective in life, and. And and it's it's important to look into all these stories uh, of 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 humanity as a whole, not just focus on on the same ones over and over and over. Um, because we it definitely gives us a different teaching on how to live life, um, and it connects us all. It it, you, it finds uh, the, it finds what connects us all, and it also defies again the victimization aspects of it. It makes you look different uh have a different view on disability right mm -hmm. and so uh, that's why it's so important to break this this victimization stigmas to tell the stories to to uh, break this detachment that people have when dealing with someone who has a disability i think we have and somebody else who wants to chime in on this so as as, as well <laughs> Thank you, PJ. Uh, just a quick thought. Listening to this, one of the things I'm reminded of is one of the themes in so much of what we do as an organization, <clears throat> which is to, to, to stress how this is about the human condition. This is about the inherent vulnerability of being human. We are all vulnerable. We are none perfect. Um, and that, that telling stories like this helps us to understand that, that, that the goal is to figure out life, is to figure out a life well lived. And I think, you know, and to recognize that that can only happen with humor, with connection, um, and with love. You know, I think you guys have told that story beautifully, but it is that shared experience of vulnerability and a recognition that vulnerability makes us open to experiences that really help, that are rich. And that's actually a treasure. So thank you for delivering that treasure. And I have to run. So we have we have a couple of questions uh, from the audience that I'd like to get to briefly, and then we'll just do one quick round of sort of closing thoughts, um, and, and we'll wrap it up for today. And we appreciate you all, you know, taking this time to both to be here in the audience, and obviously to our panel for all your uh, all the heart and thoughts and uh, talent you brought to this discussion. Um, so from our friend Nat in uh, uh, in Tokyo, uh, Nat says, uh, Dr. Yoshi. Uh, I'm not gonna pronounce the name right. I'll, I will copy and paste this into the chat. Uh, there's a book recently in Japanese titled Barrier Free Without Dignity, um, where the author, author word um, that includes, you know, heart, kindness, and compassion for the people in the book. And Nat felt this book was, um, the base concept seemed very similar to the film. So I, I will, um, I'll put that into the chat so people can see it. And we have a, we have a question for Jonathan from Dan. Um, you know, do you feel like the film, Jonathan, has allowed people to feel more comfortable talking about living with disabilities and seeing beyond their physical limitations? And Ileana, would you would you want to try and uh, give oh. maybe translate that, or are you okay, Jonathan? Yo siento que sí. Eh, creo que con el, con el documental está logrando mostrar una realidad que es muy distinta a lo que la gente pudiera pensar y lo que la gente puede llegar a decir de lo que es la discapacidad. Entonces para mí el objetivo está logrado y sé que hay un camino grandísimo por recorrer, pero me encanta poder dejar en evidencia que no somos de cristal y que también tenemos sueños, ganas y metas por conquistar. I think so. I think that the documentary is really accomplishing to to show people the reality, um, to to help people's um, thought processes al along the, the the way, and showing that we're not made of glass, that we have goals, that we have aspirations, and things that we want to do and accomplish. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Ileana. Um, Daniel, there was one, there was one question for you. There was a, another rep film that you referenced after Nomadland. Um, that someone's asking what it was. It had this uh, had the word color in it, perhaps. Uh, 
color. Um, the when I when I was talking about docu fiction, I think it, the one I'll put it here. Oh wait, it's uh, called La Soledad. That was a Venezuelan documentary that mixed uh, documentary and 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 scripted and fiction. Great. Um, well, why don't we go around the Hollywood squares here and just do you know a round of closing thoughts? Um, you know, I'll, I'll lead in. You know, I just I'm really grateful <clears throat> again to you, Jess, that you brought this project to us. I think it really um, certainly struck a chord in me. Um, you know, I'll, I'll make a shameless plug. You know, I, I produced a film uh, that we released in 2016, 17, called Healing Voices. It was a rethinking mental health film. And our intention with the document, it was a, a feature length documentary. Um, our intention was to change attitudes about, you know, what we refer to as mental illness in society and really shift the conversation to a much more humane, holistic approach. And, um, you know, the film really did it, you know, like, um, like Daniel's and Jonathan's documentary, it got out there and it, it really, you know, um, it screened on the ground in a lot of communities and there was a lot of ripple effect from it. Um, and, you know, I, I think that it actually did contribute to what I believe is a shift that's happening in how we think about and talk about mental health in our communities. I think, you know, even when I hear ads on television, um, you know, it's not all this sort of biological broken brain um, framework. You know, I think we are actually slowly shifting to a more holistic um, system of belief and understanding around mental health. And so I, for one, am, am, you know, I'm certainly a believer um, through my own life experience around the power of something like a film to actually change attitudes and, and have a ripple effect um, that, you know, really transcends, um, you know, something that is just produced as an entertainment product. So, you know, I, I commend you for your work here, Daniel and Jonathan. Andrew, I commend you for your work as well. It's just remarkable. Um, you know, anything that I can do to support it, um, I am more than willing to do. Um, and I really am eager to see how this next chapter of your project unfolds. Um, and I believe it has a center of gravity that is um, inevitable and that you're going to get to that next step in the game and it's gonna make a massive impact. So we'll be, we'll be certainly rooting for you and supporting you um, as much as we can. So thank you all for this opportunity today. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I, I mean, to echo those sentiments, um, I, I'm extremely grateful this conversation happened. I think as like a freelance creative, um, when the pandemic unfolded, I often found myself questioning, like, how do I bring like my personal experience and like my experiences with my family and kind of merge that um, with my creative path. And I feel like conversations like this is like that unfolding in real time um, and, and crossing paths with all of you as creatives as well is, is very special to me. Um, so cheers to just more opportunities and creating more spaces for other people to share their stories. Um, Cause again, it's, it's really about making these experiences more human and less hush hush. Um, and with time that empathy then creates a ripple effect where we're improving the, the conditions of other people also affected by disability um, and hopefully changing policies that, that protect our loved ones. Thank you, Jess. No, uh... Thank you, PJ, Jess, Andrew, for, for having us here. I, I think, and, and to the Institute of Human Hand for Human Center Design, it, it really means a lot that you helped us share this project uh, with the world. And as Val was saying, this is in in the end of it is all about the human condition. And and as we we're saying before, it's it's just a beautiful perspective on it. It's a beautiful take on what drives you, what uh, motivates you, and keep makes you keep going through life, despite of anything that might happen. And I think that that's what we need right now. We need projects uh, like that that are pushing us forward in 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 that way into into what connects us also as humans. 
and and projects that are again that are breaking stigmas that are breaking uh, stigmas of victimization um that that just gives us this different perspective into into jonathan's life into disability from from a perspective uh, again like from the perspective we've barely heard before and and it's important to have films like andrew's project that also breaks these stigmas that you know it's, it's a it's a beautiful musical that you that that we enjoyed so much and 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 we need the world to to see it to to see beyond all all of all of our, our limitations and to also films like crib camp that wow that that also that that documentary shows us right where uh, uh all the directions that that we go as we if if you know if we're not if, if we're not stopped in in the case of of disability where where this group of people he are heading without uh being stopped by by people that don't are not able to see their perspective and and yeah this is it's, it's we're very grateful uh that you guys allowed us to present our film here and and hopefully this next chapter it'll just keep going and and will inspire more projects like this to happen and in 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 any sense of of, of the, the way of the world um to keep finding new perspectives on on this human condition Great. Before we get to you, Andrew, because we'll, and we'll finish with Jonathan, I just want to mention a, a comment here from the chat. Um, so Daniel, there, you know, Haley Edwardson asked, um, uh, "Is a uh, truly grateful to end my day with this year in the UK? I've watched watched the film five times. We'll most certainly check out all the incredible work you are all connected to. Would love to screen this as part of her role as a university lecturer. Um, so if there are others in the audience that would like to use the film in a way similar to how it's been used today." Can they reach out to you directly? Is that is that something that is an option? Um, did you yes. want to provide perhaps your email address or something in the chat so that people can reach out to you directly and you can take advantage of those opportunities for the film? Yeah, I'm gonna write my Gmail. Uh, and anyone, please that feel that, that that wishes to screen this or or contact us to talk about the film, we're we're happy to do so. Uh, the more we can share this project, the better for 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 the film. And yeah, feel free uh, feel free to contact us. I'll Jonathan. I don't. Do you want me to put your your Gmail as well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll leave Jonathan's uh, mail here as well. I want to say something. I can. Yeah. Go. Yo, mi papá, cuando yo era niño durante mis primeros ocho años de vida, to, eh, por lo menos una vez a la semana me preguntaba que si yo era feliz. Y me lo preguntó mucho. Y un día yo le pregunté, ¿por qué me preguntas eso? También se lo preguntas a mis hermanos. Y, yo, y él me dijo, no, es solo a ti. Y yo le pedí que me lo dejara de preguntar porque yo era plenamente feliz y yo aceptaba mi realidad como era. Y realmente transitar este proyecto y tener iniciativas como esta me reafirma que soy feliz, que estoy feliz y que todo pasa por alguna razón y que ser diferente es cool, ser diferente está bien y que eh, es caerse está permitido, pero levantarse es obligatorio. Yes, so if I could add something, when um, I was growing up for like maybe the first years of my life, like maybe the first eight years of my life, once a week, my dad would come to me and he would ask me if I was happy. And he would ask me this all the time. He asked me this so much. So one day I said to him, hey, do you ask my siblings if they're happy? And he said, nope, I only ask you. And I asked him then to please stop doing that, to not ask me anymore, because I was completely happy. And being able to participate in projects like this has really demonstrated to me that I am fully happy. I'm truly happy. And I and being different is a good thing. It's something that's very positive. Uh, and I, can I say, I want to say the last uh, sentiment from what Jonathan said also. He said, Apologies. because that's all good. Uh, he said, because uh, okay, falling repítelo can you ser diferente es cool no oh, caerse ah caerse está permitido pero levantarse es obligatorio he said it, we're all, it's allowed it's it's okay to fall but it's uh it's a it's a must to stand up 
Bueno, en mi caso, levantarme no, sino sentarme, pero eh, no, no sé cómo decirlo en inglés. He says in his uh, case, to, my to case stand up, up. To sit down. Back, back. Andrew, you have any closing thoughts for us, my friend? Oh, I don't want to say thank you for letting me be involved. Um, I am uh, absolutely wonderful movie. Um, you know, congratulate on our funding for your people that go say, um, um, you know, what me always prepare, I am to help you guys in any way. Um, you know, you guys are going to go really far. Um, uh, thank you so much. Um, I can't wait to see what next from you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. We can't wait to see what's next from you either, Andrew. We'll be doing one of these at some point with your next project, all right? Uh, so Jonathan, the all star right. of the show, why don't, you, uh, why don't you bring us on? Why don't you give us some closing thoughts to wrap up our, our session today? Daniel, ¿me puedes ayudar? Este, dice que yeah. si tienes algún, algún, algo para cerrar todo, como una, eh, alguna frase, no sé, al, al, no sé, una historia, alguna frase que quieras para cerrar todo. Yo, yo, yo creo que la mejor frase es decir que hay que vivir la vida como si fuera, la, hay que vivir cada día como si fuera el último, porque realmente no sabemos cuándo va a llegar ese día. Y está en nuestras manos hacer de cada momento el más especial. Eh, la vida es el mejor regalo que nos da, que tenemos en nuestras manos permanentemente para, para explotarlo al máximo. Y tenemos que no pensar en lo que está afuera o en lo que la gente nos dice, sino en lo que verdaderamente eh, nos hace a nosotros felices y lo que nosotros queremos lograr. Yo recibí muchos, no puedo en mi vida. Y he demostrado que sí puedo si, si yo quiero y si la vida y mi entorno me ayuda. Entonces, ese es el mensaje. No se dejen de caer por lo que le, por lo que le dicen otros si en tu interior sientes que lo puedes lograr. Yeah, so I think that um, one has to live every single day of their lives as if it were the last day of our lives. It's in our hands to make life so special. And this is such a special gift that we have and to live life to its fullest. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been told that there's something, I don't think that there's anything that's impossible or out of reach. I can't tell you how many times I've been told you can't do that and I've done it. And so if it's something that makes you happy, you should pursue it. I think that's the message. Don't let yourself get down by somebody by somebody's opinion um, of you or, or that you're unable to do something because you can do it. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Um, thank you, Ileana. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Jess. This was truly inspiring. Uh, the recording will be available online on IHCD's YouTube channel uh, once we get the captioning done. So there will be a bit of a lag, uh, but it will be available to share. Um, we'll also chop it up into some bite sizes that um, Jess will distribute across social media platforms for IHCD. Um, so, you know, we please uh, continue to join us uh, for these, these, these events. Uh, and I think today was truly a remarkable opportunity for everyone here. And I'm um, just very grateful to be a part of it. So signing off for today, best of luck to you all. And, uh, you know, keep us posted on your project, Daniel and Jonathan. Will do. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Ileana, as well, for translating. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.